Few realize walking along downtown Fairborn that no Fairborn existed here until the 1920s. They would be formed in 1950 thanks to the relocation of Osborne, Ohio. Old Osborne, as it was called, no longer remains, but for a few remnants. The Cox Family Cemetery, the original site of the town, now the Skyborne Drive-In Theater and an adjacent empty field, and Osborne Road. What happened to this once prosperous railroad town northeast of Dayton? Osborne was a bustling, beautiful village just northeast of Dayton, Ohio by 1913. Founded in 1850 by John Cox and Samuel Stafford, Osborne was destined to be a railroad town, having been named after E.F. Osborne, superintendent of a local railroad line. Both Osborne and nearby Fairfield, Ohio, were competing with each other in the late 19th century to serve as a railroad hub for the lines heading into Dayton and Xenia. Osborne would win out as the railroad's choice, and the community greatly expanded. Fairfield was unable to compete, and its own expansion came to a grinding halt. Yet Osborne's fortune and prosperity ran into an unseen force of nature in 1913, the Great Dayton Flood. Between March 23rd and 25th of 1913, record-breaking rainfall hit the central United States. Yet the hardest-hit region was the Miami Valley region of Ohio, along the Mad River and Great Miami River. Thousands were left homeless from the floodwaters, businesses were destroyed, and Dayton was left in ruins. It was to be Ohio's greatest natural disaster, with over 20,000 homes destroyed statewide. On March 27, 1913, Ohio Governor James Cox appointed a Citizens Relief Commission led by Colonel Edward Deeds, president of John Patterson's NCR Corporation. On May 2, 1913, the commission took the immediate initiative to research and prevent future flooding. In 1915, the Miami Conservancy District, authorized by the 1914 Conservancy Act of Ohio, was established in downtown Dayton to carry out Morgan's flood control plan. The plan included purchasing lands and property along the Miami Valley's rivers, as well as establishing a system of five dams along these rivers. Unfortunately, the village of Osborne was situated along the Mad River. With the planned construction of Huffman Dam near Osborne, the dry floodplain would fill up in times of excessive rainfall, deluging the properties of Osborne's townspeople. The Miami Conservancy District saw it necessary for the flood plan to buy the land of and property rights to Osborne. Such a sale would result in the purchase of 400 pieces of Osborne property for $1 million. Close to a thousand Osbornians would have to find new places to live. As a result of this action, between 1915 and 1919, angry Osborne citizens led by Mayor Harry Fraun launched legal challenges against the Miami Conservancy District. Meanwhile, the writing was on the wall. The Miami Conservancy District used property condemnation proceedings to force Osbornians to sell their property to the district. Construction began on the Huffman Dam, and the railroad lines that birthed Osborne were systematically removed. The new railroad lines were laid down near Fairfield, Ohio, Osborne's historic rival, thereby draining Osborne of its financial prosperity. The U.S. Army purchased lands on Osborne's outskirts from the district in 1917 to build Wilbur Wright Field, the Army's new Air Force base. By 1921, the last legal challenge by Osborne to the Miami Conservancy District's plans failed, and the citizens mulled over what to do next. All hopes seemed lost to save Osborne. Yet in a remarkable decision, the people of Osborne chose to relocate the entire town, buildings and all, rather than give up their village's identity. Osborne citizens formed the incorporated Osborne Removal Company in February 1920 to acquire land adjacent Fairfield for a new town location. The company would also represent Osborne residents for the citizens' new mortgages and prepare the move of buildings. The company's first step was in August 1920 to purchase the site for New Osborne and all the property 
already present in Osborne from the Conservancy District. The agreed upon 265 acres cost the removal company a high price of $200 an acre, and the property rights to Osborne Buildings cost $35,000. With legal rights transferred by January 1921, the removal company divided New Osborne into six sections, within which each lot had numbers corresponding to specific, identically numbered buildings moved from the old town. Every new lot had a prepared foundation upon which the old structures would rest based on carefully drawn blueprints for each piece of property. Even though they were representing the entire town, some Osborne residents refused to abide by their contracts with the removal company, forcing a second wave of citizen legal fights. But the company soon prevailed. The railroad tracks were the first thing to have been removed from old Osborne. Now the railroad lines and Osborne's train station were the first pieces of the old town to be reinstituted in New Osborne. Next, William Taggart's house became the first house to be moved to New Osborne on June 8, 1922. By 1925, 200 men using dollies and tractors transported almost 80% of old Osborne structures to the new town. F.C. Massey, an Osborne board member and owner of a well-known hardware store, not one to lose business opportunities, continued operating his store during stops as the structural movers transported his building along the bumpy old road to New Osborne. It took the town two years to finish the move. The entire cost of moving Osborne was paid for by private individuals and town funds. Starting in 1923, Osborne and Fairfield embarked on the process of cohabitation of local resources and organizations. One such example was the Osborne Methodist Church, which merged with the Fairfield Methodist congregation, rather than having competition for parishioners of the same denomination. As the 1920s progressed, both Bath Township communities began expansion, and new workforce options developed rapidly. One of the biggest reasons for this growth was Wilbur Wright Flying Field, the Army's air base, which began employing large numbers of local civilians, 50,000 by the start of World War II, these new job opportunities helped to ease a hatred the two villages had had of each other for many years. As Fairfield and Osborne continued their joint prosperity, however, by 1947, suggestion of fusing the twin towns together would reinstitute heated debate among citizens of both towns. Finally, supporters of the Unity Plan convinced Osborne and Fairfield's town councils to pass ordinances calling for the issue on the November 1948 ballot. Supporters also proposed and pulled on the acceptability to both communities on changing the name to Fairborn, which it was thought demonstrated both communities, history, and was approved by the U.S. Postal Service. November 4, 1948 resulted in approval of the merger at the polls. Osborne, in a close vote, voted 610 to 582 for the merger. While Fairfield left no doubts about its choice, with a 1,277 to 333 vote yes, to give plenty of time to arrange the union of the combined 9,500 citizens of both towns, January 1, 1950 was set for the official establishment of Fairborn, Ohio. After 25 years of separation by mere yards, Osborne and Fairfield were welcomed into the new year of 1950 as the city of Fairborn, Ohio. Celebrations were held on January 1st, and the long drama of Osborne's misfortune from the 1913 flood had finally been erased.